One of the most important things you can do after a big affiliate launch or after a big promo is to debrief. This allows you to systematize the lessons you learn. And today, you get a behind-the-scenes look at a debrief of Scott Barlow's very first affiliate launch, and you get to learn some of the surprising lessons that he learned. Five very powerful lessons in today's episode. Let's go. Welcome to the Affiliate Guy podcast. If you want to grow your income, serve your tribe, and enjoy all the benefits of affiliate marketing and having your own affiliates, you're in the right place. Thanks for joining me today. Let's get started. All right, welcome back to part two of two in this debrief of Scott Barlow's very first affiliate launch. If you missed part one, uh, go listen to that first. Some of what we're going to talk about at the very beginning of this debrief, I think it'll make a whole lot of sense if you didn't hear the the last part of that one. So go back and listen to that. Uh, in that episode, I mentioned that this uh, this type of debrief actually used to be a part of our paid program. Uh, this was reserved for you know for our high end clients. They would get access to these debriefs so they could learn lessons. But we did this about about four years ago now. Scott and I, along with Mark Sievercrop, who used to be on our team but ran his affiliate launch. And, uh, so this was, uh, we did this like four years ago and, you know, it's just, it's time now to share this with more people. This is, uh, this particular debrief had been reserved for our, our high end clients. I mentioned on the last episode, if you're interested in applying, uh, for our coaching program, you can go to your affiliate launch and fill out the application there. We'll be in touch to, to schedule an interview for that. And if that doesn't work, um, you know, if, if you're not ready for that type of commitment, uh, go check out the Affiliate Code Unlocked. It's a five-hour, nearly five-hour training that we did, basically revealing uh, well, as much as we could in that period of time of our secret playbook. Uh, you can find that at mattmcwilliams.com forward slash code. I'll link to both of those in the show notes. And that's what you're going to be getting in this is just that that like behind the scenes look. What went right? What did they do well? What can they improve? What lessons did they learn? And one of the things that Scott shared with me was there were some pretty surprising lessons that he got out of this. Like it was just, you know, the, the process of doing this debrief. So if we go back to part one, we focused on what they did well. Part two, I want to focus on what they can improve. And so here's some things I picked up from Scott. And I want you to hear from, from him and Mark. And we kind of just go through, um, you know, go through the whole process, like the whole, the whole launch. You know, again, what went well, what didn't go well. What do they learn? What lessons can you glean from that? The first lesson that he picked up on, and this is definitely something that they can improve, is that they need to communicate with affiliates earlier. Uh, They just did not put in the time to prepare for the affiliate side of the launch like they should have. And one of the things he said was like, man, I wish I had just done what you teach, which is, you know, start months out. Uh, He said, you know, I would have liked to have had more communication with affiliates leading up to the launch. Uh, you know, just with all the other, he said, however, with all the other launch preparations, I was unable to do that. This is, this is why you need a system. This is why you need a, what we call a comm plan, a communication plan for your affiliates. And so again, this is one of the things we do with our coaching clients. Uh, we, we give them the communication plan and it's, you know, it's one of those things where the reality is you don't need to spend hours and hours a week, 20 to 30. 45 minutes a week leading up to like about two to three weeks before the launch is more than enough time. Uh, 45 minutes is more than enough time. That'll allow you to have one 20 minute call and then one, uh, you know, mass email and then maybe one Facebook post to your affiliates Facebook group. And that's enough, you know, when we're talking two, three months out. So again, it helps when you just have a plan, like what am I supposed to, to communicate? And we, we give you the plan. You know, we do that in, in the, in the affiliate code training as well. We just give you the, like, here's the communication calendar. Here's the template. Just go execute on this. So you don't have to think, well, what could I, what am I supposed to message them today? No, we just give it to you. You know, it's super, super simple. So communicate with affiliates earlier. The second thing that he said uh, he would change, and, and I observed this as well, is just, he would have had more one-on-one affiliate interaction. Um, you know, again, this goes along with communicating earlier. But one of the things that he made sure he was talking about is like in their next launch, they're going to make sure that they create personalized promotion plans. 
to help their affiliates to tailor the launch calendar to their personal needs, to their personal calendars. And this is something we do for our clients. It's something you get in the affiliate code training is we walk you through how to do that, how to set up a personal communication plan. You even get a template of uh, what we give to our affiliates. It's really cool because you don't have to reinvent the wheel. The other thing, the big, big lesson that I, I would say, big thing that they can improve was just better pre-launch content. They, they wanted to appeal to different types of learners. You know, they wanted to have an audio version and, an, and a video course and all this stuff. And, and what they were thinking was that this would, you know, they would be completely independent of each other, but then it confused affiliates. Like, where should we be sending traffic? And it, like, it made it difficult for them to encourage affiliates to promote because there was no logical progression to the content. So you, you got to make sure that there is a logical progression to the content and you make it really easy for affiliates. There, there can be almost like an embarrassment of riches. You know, one of the things that we found when we analyzed the big difference between seven and eight figure launches versus six in like low seven figures. So kind of like the difference between, you know, half a million dollar launches to $2 million launches and 5 million to $10 million plus launches was number of entry points. You wanted to have more entry points, more free stuff, you know, 10 or 11 entry points. You don't want to have 30 though. It, it gets to be confusing. And so I think what, what they talked about, and I'd be interested to follow up with him, is they're going to really focus on the eight-day course. And then there's a natural sales progression that ends with the opportunity to purchase the, you know, the paid course. Uh, the fourth thing that they, they wanted to make sure they got was uh, better affiliate software. This was a lesson they learned the hard way. Um, you know, if you're going to upgrade your, your launches, you got to upgrade your, upgrade your affiliate software. Um, you know, they, they had iDev. iDev is great. We recommend iDev. You can find iDev at mattmcwilliams.com forward slash iDev. iDev is great if you want to run a five-figure affiliate launch. It's totally great. But if you're going to grow, if you're going to go more robust, you've got to, you've got to upgrade. And they upgraded to Infusionsoft uh, shortly after uh, this affiliate launch. And so those were four things that they learned um, again, I'll link to iDev in the 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 show notes because again, I recommend it. It's it's a very f affordable option. Like you're going to pay more in like a week of using Infusionsoft than you are in a month or in like ever. And I think as iDev is just a one time payment. Um, also, you know, there's something that we're working on. Uh, we're working on a an affiliate tracking system that I'll have more to share with you hopefully in the new year. Can't really say much right now because we're working with another company and there's an NDA and I'm not really allowed to say anything other than we may or may not be working on it. But they learned one of the most surprising things that, that Scott pointed out was just how much he said one of the most surprising things for me was to realize just how much stuff I was missing out on with regards to interacting and supporting our affiliates. He said, I knew that personalized attention was important, but had not realized how much effort can and should be put into interacting with supporting our affiliates. And he said, you know, we also realized that our webinars are a nearly indispensable part of our current sales funnel. We talked about that last time. And so they wanted to make sure they put even more attention to focus on this strength. Uh, overall, Scott and Mark did an amazing job. Again, this was years ago. You get to listen in on this debrief now, which is really cool. Uh, you know, as Scott said, one of the things that that was surprising was just how much goes into it. It helps to have a plan. We can help with that. You can, you know, become a client of ours, youraffiliatelaunchcoach.com or grab the training at mattmcwilliams.com forward slash code for the affiliate code unlocked. Or, you know what? Just create your own plan. Like any plan is better than no plan. Any plan is better than no plan. That's for sure. So go check those out and let's dive right in to my debrief with Scott Barlow and Mark Sievercrop on his first affiliate launch. So here's a question, uh, and, and I know the answer, but I'm going to ask it anyway. Um, it's not one of those rhetorical questions either. Like, um, did you rub Mark's head for good luck before the launch? It's not <laughs> one of those questions. We all it's, know the answer. It is so. rhetorical. Yeah. yeah. Um, so this being your first JV launch. Yeah. You are now on 
an awesome system known as Infusionsoft. Yes. But you were not at the time. So so yes. tell us about that experience because I'm, I'm not going to share the lesson first. I'll share the lesson after. Um, how did you do this launch? What what system did you use and kind of what was the, the process? Yeah. Um, and Mark, you can jump in at any point in time too if I forget anything. But we, uh, I mean, we had a very... Uh, duct tape together system is probably the easiest way to say it both with the zapier the funnels together. that we built yeah zapier together yeah. zapier is the well, duct it's tape the modern the version of sanford and son right yes <laughs> i'm not sure what that means entirely but <laughs> how do i stop this now um in the podcast <laughs> So we had, let's see, what were we using? We were using iDev Affiliate for <laughs> iDev Affiliate for uh, for our affiliate software, and that was synced up with uh, Member Mouse, which was our membership software. That's like where we uh, hosted all the gated content for the for the course and everything else like that. Uh, we don't use that anymore, even though I loved loved uh, Member Mouse. But does MacGyver? Do you know software. MacGyver? I do. I do. Okay. He works at Zapier. And, <laughs> Okay, so I gotta get a sponsor. All this stuff together with with Mailchimp and a, a bunch of other systems. Long story short, um, <laughs> what did most of the affiliate tracking was IDev Affiliate, and that was great. Uh, that was actually really really great for when we were working one on one. It got really really complicated once we started bringing on well, let's say like seven affiliates to mm -hmm. work with at once. That was a little bit more challenging because we discovered we had a couple of people that were like on both lists. And iDev, um, there's some settings in there that can make it easier, but for the most part, it's challenging. I had somebody in there that uh, was had already been a paying customer for me for, I don't know, half a year or something along those lines. And then they had clicked through an affiliate offer and all of a sudden my affiliate got the commission. We had to yeah. correct little things like that. So it worked great up until a point. It was phenomenal, in fact. And it, the price was right, too. But yeah. It's what, 200 bucks or less? Yeah, I think it's like I mean, You and I talked bucks, about this bucks. like two years ago. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, and, and I want to, the, the reason I asked that question is, you know, this is not the how do you do a $2.85 million launch video. This is like, how do you do your first? And sometimes you do have to like copper wire, duct tape, and bubble gum mm -hmm. stuff together. You have to MacGyver it or Sanford and Sonic. Gosh, I'm going to have to explain that to you later. Um, <laughs> Okay, for those of you too young for Sanford, and <laughs> no, um, don't watch it. I was too busy watching like I don't know whatever. Nice writer. Did you watch Night Rider? Yeah, Night Rider. Okay. Yes. Um, lady. Uh, Sanford and Son was it was a was a father and son who ran a junkyard and they kind of like pieced stuff together essentially. So yep. the point being that you worked with what you had and you were still successful. You you know, looking back, you go, well, I'm thankful I'm not doing that anymore because it was more work than, you know, I needed to put in. But yeah. my point was you didn't have, you know, the money at that time really to go get the better system in Fusionsoft and you do your first launch, you make some money and, oh, look, now you have the money to, you know, you're able to justify that expense. So don't be, this is to the viewers, do not be intimidated thinking you have to have the best system. Again, when you're doing that first or second JV launch with people who, you know, go back to rule number one, start with who you know, they don't care if you're on Infusionsoft or iDev or, you know, whatever. Like they're doing it because it's Scott. Mm -hmm. And as long as, you know, they, if you know them really well, they can trust you that you're going to give them accurate reporting and make sure that their sales are credited. Um, just they're going to be fine. And, and side note, the whole thing where somebody signed up later is, is totally, it happens on Infusionsoft. I've seen it happen, you know, mm -hmm. where you had a paying customer and then their recurring payment yep. got credited to a part. It happens in any system. Um, that is one of the reasons why as soon as you are financially able it's like as soon as you can, before you ever even need it, switch to something like Infusionsoft. Switch to your top tier thing so that you have to deal with less of those like weird issues. Mm -hmm. So that's an aside. So um, that's awesome. Uh, okay. We, we talked about what some top people did. Uh, we talked about what you guys did that went really well. Um, one question for you, Mark, specifically. What is something that you did in this launch that you absolutely are not going to do in the next one other than deal with iDev? 
<laughs> it's like I have the sponsor of Zapier and then like the anti-sponsor of IDEV. <laughs> IDEV seriously, if you if you if you've got less than five hundred dollars to spend, oh, it's great. Yeah, totally. don't grab IDEV, guys. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's not an endorsement. I don't, have, I don't have an affiliate link, believe it or not. Um, right. It works, I do. I do. and it's <laughs> I do talk to me. <laughs> email Scott. It is. Email and Scott it, at matt at com <laughs> and ask for his. I'll get an affiliate link. How about that? No, it's uh, you're you're exactly right, and and yeah, I mean, I was I was one of the proponents, and and to me, it was one of those. It's like if you your first car is like a you know your dad gives you a brand new Chevy pickup, and then all of a sudden somebody hands you a a 1973 Pinto. I don't even know if they made a Pinto in 1973, but I mean, that's where my frustration came from. You know, was was the fact that you know Matt with you, all of our clients work with Infusionsoft, so for me. Coming from Infusionsoft, I saw all the things that we could have been doing that we weren't doing or we couldn't do. Um, but no, it's a, I mean, it's a great system. And I, you and were the was, kid whose dad bought him a Lexus first in terms of affiliate yeah, systems. That's yeah. right, exactly. My, okay, so we got to do that. Let's take. Let's take. What was your first car? Mine. Yeah. 1980 Toyota pickup, Ooh. SR5. Scott, not surprised. Not surprised. Uh, 1982 Toyota Tercel with a hole on either side. Nice. And you guys Rust, are younger. Rustful. Scott, you're younger than me, right? Thir- almost 37. Oh, yeah, I am younger than you. So yeah. how is it that you guys ha- – your first cars were old? Mine was a 1991. Now, this is 1997. Mine was a 1991 Lincoln Continental. Now, you think, man, nice. yeah, I left seat. This nice. thing. <laughs> it was a boat. <laughs> I got, got thir- 100 bucks. I got 30 miles to the gallon going down the side of a mountain. <laughs> if there was any wind resistance, I had to fill up just to get across town. Okay. And this is so far, like this thing was literally a boat, but I mean, it was, it was sweet though. I mean, I, and it, it cost like $4,000. I think a friend of my dad sold it to him. It was like four forty forty five hundred 4,500 bucks. And this, I mean, this thing had like, it told you what your current miles to the gallon was. It had the lumbar Ooh. support. I mean, it, it was pretty That's sweet for a 91, 91 yeah. but then the hydraulics went out on it. I'm no joke. You, if you I went over like a speed anymore. bump, I hit my head on the roof <laughs> and it cost more than we had paid for the car to get them fixed. That's fine. Mine was so an 80 we, because it was my dad's pickup. Like my dad had bought it brand new. Um, so I'm very thankful. I had a, I had a, not only a sweet and loving um, grandmother, but also a grandmother whose um, husband was very good with money. <laughs> it's a nice way of saying my grandmother was loaded. <laughs> and so she bought me a brand new car. Nice. And I remember that like going from the hoopty mobile that also had a garbage bag for the back right window. Cause somebody threw a brick through it on campus. Uh, going from the hoopty mobile where my head hit the thing to this, even just this, you know, cloth seat Mitsubishi Mirage. I was like, yes, I'm not, <laughs> no headaches. Did, All right. So we get to that point. No. And so then I, let's then I talk about to an older one. Oh, uh, an old, you went backwards. This is ridiculous. 1979 Camaro. Well, see, that's not going backwards. It was an upgrade. It's just older. I just, I said it upgraded to an older one. No. So something that we, we did last time that I wouldn't do this. Time. Hey, you remember the question. That's, I do remember that is impressive. Quite amazing. Um, it was long gone. I did No. And, and, and where I was going with that last one was just the fact that, I mean, Matt, you and I have done things before where we just set up different landing pages for people. So, I mean, there's no excuse not to, to start doing this at some level. I mean, iDev's great if that's what you can use, but be prepared that there will be things that you will miss out on if you don't upgrade at some point. Yeah. All right, so what would we do different? I think, you know, Scott and I have talked a little bit about this, and one of the things that, that, um, that we really looked at was the fact that we – there was confusion I felt like with affiliates as far as what to promote when, because we had, we had an audio course and we had an eight day video course, which was yeah. a lot of the same type of content. Mm-hmm. Um, and so there was to me as, as the affiliate uh, director trying to say, Hey, mail for this or mail for this. It was, it was hard to ask them to mail again at times because I couldn't distinguish why should you send to this? If you, if you mail to this, um, and so I think that's one of the things that we really talked about is really clarifying what your, your pre-launch um, content's going to be and what your strategy is going to be. And, and that's where we, we've talked in a lot around, you know, what's Scott's strength. Scott's strength is webinars. How do, we, how do we play into that fact and not have, you know, I guess, not necessarily repeat content because the content was different, um, but it was easy for people to look at it and say, okay, well, this is just an audio version of a video course. Why am I going to send to both of them? Yeah. Um, so I think that's one of the biggest things that, that we've looked at that we want to, 
um, do better with the next one is just really making sure that every if you're going to have a piece of pre-launch content that there's a purpose for it and it fits into the pre-launch content i think we we get so caught up in this idea of you know three videos or what three videos and then a webinar which i mean jeff walker is a guru and he's done a fantastic job of of teaching how to do this and i'm not saying that you shouldn't take what he you know, take what he says and, and really look at it, but no, you don't do it just you to test do what it. works for your audience. Right. Yeah. And you don't do it just to do it. I mean, I think, yeah. I think sometimes we get so caught up in, well, we have to have three videos or whatever. Well, if that doesn't work for your audience, if, if webinars is what works, maybe you should do four webinars mm-hmm. instead of three pieces of content. I mean, the, the key is, and I was thinking about this, Matt, the other day with the authority summit, I mean, our goal you know, with, with any launch and Scott's is no exception. Our goal is not to get opt-ins, it's to get sales. Mm -hmm. So if you can get more sales by doing webinars, but maybe you don't have as many opt-ins, I mean, that's, you weigh that out and you make the decision. So for me, I think it's just, we need to make sure that our our pre-launch sequence has a purpose. It's not just there because it's supposed to be there. So you kind of answered the question that I was going to ask um, which I think is absolutely rude because I didn't get to ask it. Well, hold on because I think there's one more learning in there. <laughs> hold on. We can a- we, let's see if we can answer the next question too. That's also <laughs> <That's right. laughs> this is You uh, can answer a question I'm not even going to ask. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. But to build off really quick what Mark said, I think one other piece that, uh, that we learned, uh, and Mark, you can probably articulate this better than I can, but we, we learned that um, leaving it leaving some of those things open-ended versus uh, really confirming uh, with people when they're going to mail and even actually being more instructive. Like we, uh, we went so far as to give timelines. You can mail for the, uh, you know, the, the what fits you audio course from this time to this time. And we put like a four day period on there and then which means um, they don't mail at all in those four days. Yeah. So <laughs> here's here's what happened is people who went through and was like, well, should I mail on that day or should I mail this day? And mm-hmm. they kind of put off the decision to the last minute, and then maybe they'd email on the last day, or uh, or they were confused about it and didn't email at all. And you know, when we're working in a space where this isn't something that people do every single day and we're wanting to help them through and make it easier. That's not the easiest way to go. So the easier way to go would be say, Hey, look, we've already figured it out. Here's the best day to email for this type of thing. And here's the best day to email for this next thing. And then you email on, on that day. And I I felt like that was being too prescribed, but truly that was actually helpful to people after in hindsight. Yeah. That's a lesson I learned. I mean, when, when somebody says, Hey, um, when's the best day to mail? That is not an invitation to use the word or at any point in your communication. Yeah. Like it's, Oh, Monday or Tuesday, anytime next week. Like don't know Tuesday noon, Eastern standard time. They mean what they say. (laughs) You know, that's, they asked you for what's the best time. So tell them. and, And I mean, the truth is like, if you legitimately don't know, then you still just pick a time, you know, Tuesday morning. Like that's the best time. Well, maybe it's Wednesday afternoon. I have like, sometimes I don't really know. Right. Um, I can tell you when the best time to mail for a Wednesday afternoon webinar is it's Wednesday morning. You know, it's not Tuesday evening. It's not, you know, Monday, you know, afternoon it's Wednesday morning. But other than that, like what's the best time to mail video one? I don't know. Sometimes like here's the day mail on the second day. It's Tuesday. You mail it. And, and so don't use or don't use any time. Just, uh, you know, do that. And the, the second lesson is that, you know, you, you clearly outlined there was there's a big difference between somebody saying, sure, I'll mail and I'm going to mail on Tuesday, the 7th at 7 a.m. Eastern time. Like, cool, because if I log in and check the stats at 10 a.m. Eastern time on Tuesday, the 7th, and you don't have any traffic, um, you said you were mailing. But I don't see anything. Oh, I am so sorry. I scheduled it for tomorrow by accident. Cool. Go unschedule it and send it now. <laughs> you know? um, or I forgot. Let me go do that now. And now you've created a sense of urgency in them because uh, you know, they made a commitment. Mm-hmm. So, all right. Awesome. As we wrap up here, um, any last thoughts? I mean, anything, uh, any just like a, a lesson you want to share from this first, you know, big JV launch experience that you guys had? Hmm. You mean other than the ones we've already shared? Those those weren't good enough. <laughs> that's that's why I asked. Are, are there any others? Any any last? <laughs> yeah. You know, 
I think for me, Jeez. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> the very biggest thing that I took away, which is ironic, and this is going to be a little bit repetitive, but it was just by far the biggest lesson is um, go with what you're great at and kind of build your JV launch around what you already know works. So in mm -hmm. our case, like one of the things that we, we had done and we talked to, about this fairly extensively is, look, we'd already been testing for a long, long, long time. And that actually helped uh, when I went to have those conversations with those those few JV potential JV partners. Yep. Some people ended up saying no, but it wasn't that I was going and having a conversation saying, "Hey, you, would you give us a chance?" It was that we'd already tested this thing out yep. and we already knew what was playing to our strengths a little bit for the, yeah. for the most it's, part. So it's a very different conversation. Like, yeah. "Hey, I got this product. What's your EPC?" Well, I don't know. EPC, by the way, is earnings per click. So if you if you send a thousand clicks and you earn a thousand dollars, you made a $1 EPC. And it's, it's a totally different conversation, especially as you get bigger. Um, mm -hmm. when people are like, well, what, ex what results should I expect? Uh, I have no idea. Like, no, you should expect approximately a 5.7% conversion rate. That's our average on cold traffic. And that'll, you know, that'll equal an EPC of $3 and 72 cents. Cool. You know, how big is your list? 10,000 people. Well, then you should expect to send about 500, you know, like you can actually give them, you're going to make $3,750 on average. Yeah. Awesome. I'm in or I'm out, yeah. you know, either one, like either answer is perfectly acceptable, but it is a totally different conversation than when you're like, yep, never tested this before. No idea. <laughs> can I see, can I see a replay of your, of your webinar? Nope. Never done one. Um, all right. Well then, you know, like that's why I say like do a webinar for two people if you okay. need to. Do a webinar to an empty room just to be doing a webinar and you'll get better at doing those. So at least you have something to share with somebody if they ask. <laughs> um, so any last thoughts from, from you, Mark? I think, you know, for me, one of the things that I've learned, and this is partially from uh, the first launch, but partially in the lead up to our upcoming launch is just, you know, again, we've touched on this a little bit, but really understanding your industry because, you know, Matt, you and I have done, you know, I've done, shoot, how many, how many launches with you now? Five, six, seven, something like that. And I thought, I thought I knew how to recruit affiliates for our next one. And we found out very quickly that this industry does not work that way. You know, the, the no. way that you and I recruit affiliates for all the other launches we've done was a complete and utter failure. And so, you know, Scott and I have had a lot, a lot of conversations about why is it, why is it that way? How, how do we find these affiliates? Where do we find them? Where are they at? Not only where are they at as far as like Twitter or whatever, but where are they at in their businesses? Where, what are they wanting? And, and I think that's one of the biggest things I realized is that you have to look at the industry you're in and you have to look at who um, your, your potential clients are, but also who your potential affiliates are. And you have to know and understand what moves them to want to promote your product. And if you don't do that, you know, it just, you can't take what's what, what necessarily, you can't on blind faith take what works on an, in another industry and just assume that it's going to work. And so I think that's the biggest thing that I've taken away. And the thing that we're implementing now is, okay, where do we find these affiliates? Where, where are they at? How do we, how do we connect with them? And we found that it's a lot higher touch than a lot of other launches that we've done. And that's probably partly because we don't have some relationships with them. Like Matt, you have a lot with a lot of the, the affiliates we work with, but either way, it's a lot higher touch and we have to go about it a different way. You can't just send an email, give them a, a one page and say, Hey, here it is. So I think it's, it's understanding that and, and not getting, um, not one getting discouraged and, and just realizing again, like Scott said in the beginning that, that we have a goal for what's going to happen in a year and realizing that, Hey, because of this industry, we're going to have to train people a little bit more. We're going to have to take it a little yeah. bit slower. We're going to have to to hold hands a little bit more because that's just the way it is. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. And not judging what a launch for a, a um, a, what did you call it? It's got a lifetime, de life, life, lifestyle design course for people that don't know what lifestyle is. Lifestyle design. You can't take that course. Yeah. You can't take that sort of course in that industry and hold it up against, um, you know, a course like, you know, Josh Turner's. It, it's totally different. The people are different. The customers are different. The affiliates are different. You're different. Your business models, everything's different. And so um, you, that's a good place to start. And that's a good framework to start from. But you have to be willing to say, okay, this doesn't work. What are we going to do now? And, you know, that was the biggest takeaway for me is just realizing that, you know, there's principles that work, but that doesn't mean that the tactics necessarily will work. And here's an interesting thing on that note. And I know we got to wrap up here, but um, I haven't looked at it this way before, but I really, um, really, it's like having 
two sets of customers. It is having two sets of customers. And like, I feel bad. I feel terrible. Like I'm not producing for uh, my affiliates if they're not making money on it. Cause I feel like I'm letting them mm-hmm. down. But then on that note, I should really be taking the same, <laughs> taking the same strategy, you know, when we're looking for affiliates, like what is, I, I look for our target market for our customers. And we spend a lot of time establishing what the target market looks like and doing the research and everything like that. And really understanding the inside of out and outs like Mark's talking about. Why am I not having an affiliate target market where I've got the same, you know, here's our avatar and like the same level of care in that and understanding. So, our, so as we wrap up, Scott, I want to I want to touch on that real quick because um, then I want to spend just a moment before we end um, talking about your next launch. But yeah. that the question that I had that I just thought of is like, who is your your avatar? So somebody's watching this, going, I wonder if I'm a good fit, um, you know, for Scott. So now the easy answer is go sign up and just you know ask him. You know, ask Mark and Scott, like, hey, I mean, is my audience a good fit? So, so who is it? Like, what, what are they write about? What are they doing um, that make them a good fit to promote this as a, as a JV partner? These are, um, a, if you have a list or audience or customers that have people that are frustrated in their jobs and want to do something differently, and aren't entirely sure what, uh, <laughs> what they want to be doing then you probably have a fit for for our target market. For statistically, you just it. described 81% of the population. It is. It is. <laughs> I'm just it saying is. statistically. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's and it does. I mean, that, that's not just the career section. I mean, that's, no. you know, self-improvement. That's, we were with you know, finance, uh, finance, finance right? people in the finance space before yeah. because that that is a lot more hand-in-hand, but definitely self-improvement, definitely personal development, um, definitely a lot of other tangible industries. Um, Mm. I haven't worked with people in the, in the, um, like fitness space, but I suspect that there's a uh, overlap there too. Cause these are the people that are attracted to this are really interested in improving themselves and doing something differently than the rest of the world, even though they're currently doing the same sort of thing. So hint to the people watching, um, survey your audience. And if you find that they're, this might fit, then, uh, reach out to Scott or, uh, below this video, you guys will see a link to sign up as a partner for them. Uh, you don't lose anything by signing up. It's not like you're going to hold a gun to your head and make you send <laughs> you 13 emails. Um, it's, but only, I, I would, it's only 11 right now. Yeah, here's what I would do. I would sign up. Um, I would sign up for Scott's next launch, even if you're not in his industry. Mark and Scott would be glad for you to be on their, their JV list and for you to get their emails and, and watch the evolution of how they run a launch for the next year. I don't care if you're in an industry that has nothing to do with career stuff. It'd be cool to watch. I know I'm going to do that. So guys, I just want to thank you so much. Uh, your generosity, your openness. This has been awesome. And I encourage anybody watching uh, to get started, go out and do your first small launch and build and grow from there. I'm excited to watch you two uh, build and grow this thing to something remarkable. Awesome. Thanks, Matt. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. So some really cool lessons there. Uh, Big thanks to Scott and Mark for sharing that. Again, this was from all the way back a few years ago, and we decided to open up the vault to some of our paid debriefs and some of our paid content here on the podcast. And we'll be doing that over the next year or so. We'll be opening up some of that. We're also going to be doing some interviews with other folks and some debrief with some other folks. So if you are, if you've just done your first affiliate launch, or, or maybe it's your second or third, you know, it doesn't matter. You've just done an affiliate launch and you'd like to be featured on the podcast you would like to do a debrief with us and get some exposure for your brand. I don't care if it was a $2,000 affiliate launch on a $20 product or a $2 million affiliate launch on a $10,000 product. doesn't matter if you've done something with affiliates and you want to be featured and you want to share some of what you learned, uh, just reach out to us at asktheaffiliateguy.com. Let us know some details and uh, we'll be in touch to see if that would make a good episode for the podcast. So ask the affiliate guy.com is where you can reach me there. Again, make sure to check out your affiliate launch coach.com. If you're interested in applying for our coaching program and getting the guidance that it takes to, uh, to take your affiliate program to the next level or to build it from scratch. Uh, if you're, if you are building it from scratch and you know, you're running a small business, maybe you don't have any revenue yet 
or very small revenue, then check out the affiliate code unlocked training. Uh, it's a much more affordable option than our coaching program. Literally like one, I don't know, one two thousandth of the cost or one one thousandth of the cost, something like that. Uh, you can check that out at mattmcwilliams.com forward slash code. It's about a five hour training. We reveal all of our secrets previously that we've never shared before. Uh, we reveal all of our secrets for how to start and run an affiliate program, how to find affiliates and all that fun stuff. So check that out, mattmcwilliams.com forward slash code. And I will see you in the next episode. Thank you so much for listening today. Remember to check out all of our deep dives into affiliate marketing at theaffiliateguide.tv. And if you have a question, ask it at asktheaffiliateguide.com. Who knows, maybe you even be featured on an upcoming episode. And lastly, if you haven't yet, make sure to leave a rating and review wherever you're listening to this episode. See you soon. Uh, last question, guys. Uh, when is the next opportunity to promote, uh, figure out what fits? When When is that uh, the next launch? Runs May, end of uh, or May. April 25th. April 25th through May 9th. Come on, Zapier. Come on, uh, Zapier. So that is April 25th through May 9th. That's 2016. If you're watching this in the future, um, tell me uh, I want to know if you if, are you on a hoverboard or what. <laughs> uh, I'm on the button. Right